This video is about neutron star mergers and how we're planning to use them to learn more about extreme states of matter. Neutron star mergers are kind of cosmic car crashes in which two ultra-dense collapsed stars, neutron stars, collide and merge. In our whole galaxy, this only happens a few times in every million years, but there are a lot of scientists who are very excited about them. Astronomers are one group. They're excited because they've just found the first clear evidence that mergers happen. A few years ago, they detected the gravitational waves emitted by mergers of neutron stars in other distant galaxies. Other scientists are interested in them because, although neutron star mergers are very rare, it now looks like they are the original source that produced most of the heavy elements, like gold or uranium, that we find on Earth. And then there are nuclear theorists like me, and we're excited about neutron star mergers because they're like an experiment done by nature. Before, I compared them to car crashes, but they're also like a kind of cosmic pressure cooker. For a few milliseconds, they squeeze and heat matter to densities and temperatures that you don't even find in the Big Bang. So, we hope to use them as probes of how matter behaves at these ultra-high densities and temperatures. OK, so we want to use mergers to study ultra-hot and dense matter. Here's the landscape we want to explore. It's the phase diagram of what form matter takes at different densities and temperatures. At low temperatures and densities, you get ordinary matter. That's just a tiny little corner on this plot because it goes up to insanely high temperatures like a trillion degrees, where everything falls apart into its most basic constituents, and you get quark-gluon plasma, like in the first microseconds of the Big Bang. But what if you compress matter as well, making it denser than nuclei? That's what happens in neutron star mergers. At those densities, is matter still made of neutrons and protons, what people call nuclear matter? Or are there also particles called hyperons that contain strange quarks? Or are all these particles crushed out of existence, liberating the quarks inside them to make some form of quark matter? We'd like to use neutron star mergers to help us answer these questions. That means we need to make predictions of what a merger would look like for different forms of matter and compare those predictions with what the astronomers actually find when they observe neutron star mergers. So, what we need to do is, for every form of matter that we guess might be created in mergers, we need to calculate what properties that matter would have. We then feed that information into a big computer and simulate a merger with that type of matter. It tells us what would happen, what the astronomers should see, if we do all that, assuming that the merger creates hot nuclear matter, and that disagrees with what they see, then matter at those temperatures and densities isn't nuclear matter, and we need to explore one of the other ideas, like hyperonic matter. Calculate its properties, do a simulation assuming that's what's created in the merger, and compare to observations. All right, so we want to do a computer simulation of a merger. So we need to know how the ultra-dense and ultra-hot matter in the merger behaves. But which properties are the important ones? Up to now, the simulations have just used the equation of state, which tells you how stiff the material is, how much it resists being squeezed. That's important, but if we want to accurately predict what happens in the merger, then we have to include all the things that are going on in there. For example, there's damping, this means the kind of frictional properties, like viscosity, that turn coherent motion into heat. There's also diffusion. This includes transport properties like thermal conductivity, which tell you how heat spreads from hotter regions of the merger to cooler ones. So, do features like viscosity and thermal conductivity play an important role? If we want to do really accurate simulations of mergers, do we need to include them in our computer calculations? Let's look at these properties a little bit more closely. Shear viscosity measures how much a fluid resists when you try to make it flow. Honey, for example, has a high shear viscosity, whereas water is much less viscous. 
Thermal conductivity measures how quickly heat spreads through a material from hotter regions to their cooler neighbors. It turns out that both these effects are rather small in hot nuclear matter. A group of us, nuclear theorists and neutron star merger simulators, found this out. For nuclear matter, we calculated the shear viscosity and thermal conductivity. Ideally, you'd feed those results into simulations and find out what observers would see, but current simulation codes don't know how to include them. So instead, we did some estimates of how much they would probably affect the merger, and we found that they're very slow. So during the 20 milliseconds of a typical neutron star merger, they wouldn't have time to affect what happens. So is that the end of it? Or is there any other kind of friction or damping that might matter in neutron star mergers? The answer, it turns out, is yes. There's a thing called bulk viscosity. You can understand bulk viscosity in terms of how a bouncing ball gradually loses energy and stops bouncing. Each time the ball bounces, it gets compressed. But because of bulk viscosity, some of that compression energy gets turned into heat, so the ball doesn't snap back into shape again with as much energy as you would have expected. The way this comes up in neutron star mergers is that density oscillations caused by the violent collision get damped out. The time it takes them to die away is called the damping time. So our group calculated the damping time for matter made of neutrons and protons, and we found it could be as short as 10 milliseconds. This means that even though the merger itself is very quick, lasting about 20 milliseconds, bulk viscosity is so strong that even in that short time it can damp out any density oscillations that are going on. So why is this important? Well, it shows us how we could use mergers to learn about ultra-dense matter. Remember, the way we use mergers as a natural experiment is that we calculate the properties of whatever form of dense matter we think might be created, simulate how a merger would go with that kind of matter, and predict what observers would see. So we've learned something about which properties are important for doing accurate simulations of neutron star mergers. As well as the equation of state, we need to know the bulk viscosity. Now, what do we do next? Firstly, we need to include the bulk viscosity in our simulations of mergers. Up to now, it's been ignored, but it can damp out density oscillations really fast, and we need to see if that affects our predictions of the gravitational waves emitted in mergers. Secondly, we only looked at the bulk viscosity of ordinary nucleonic matter, neutrons and protons. We need to calculate the bulk viscosity of other, more exotic forms of matter, like hyperonic or quark matter, and feed those into simulations and see if they give a different prediction for how the merger should look to astronomers. If there's a difference, that would be really exciting. It would mean that we could use future gravitational wave observations of mergers to tell us what kind of matter is created inside them. And that would finally tell us what form matter takes when it's squeezed and heated to these incredible extremes.